Hi there, my fellow Java programmer. Today you're going to learn how to work with Git's feature branches using IntelliJ IDEA. And IntelliJ has a couple of nice convenience features, which makes handling these feature branches rather simple. So let's get started. Okay, so back in the Git for the Scare project, let's start with the easy questions. What branch are we actually on? And it's a bit stupid that you can't see it in presentation mode, so you have to make sure to go back to or to exit the presentation mode. And then in the lower right corner, you'll see it says git master, which means you're on master branch. And there are several different ways how to use a master branch. Some teams use it as like a development branch. It has all the latest changes. Some teams use it like a stable release branch. So it has the latest release changes that are deployed in production. But for now, it doesn't matter. We just click the master branch and now a window pops up. And as you can see, you can create a new branch. You see what branches you have checked out locally, and it's only the master branch for now. And you can also see what branches live on the remote repository. And again, that's only the master branch for now. So imagine that master has all the latest stable release production ready code and you want to work on a new feature and that's why you create a new branch. So call the branch maybe feature 2.0. Right. And you can immediately see, actually, let me just go back, click new branch again. You'll see a small checkbox called checkout branch, which actually means create the branch and then immediately switch to the branch. Right. So that's why you'll see feature 2.0 down here. And you see it only lives locally and we haven't pushed it yet or you haven't pushed it yet. So it's not listed under remote branches. Okay, so now you can go crazy and maybe create a new method called public void freakout because that's the new feature. Kittens can now freak out. And um, they just print to the console, I am freaking out right now, whatever that looks like. You can commit that change and say work on feature 2.0, freaking out, and then simply commit the change. Right. And you can make more changes, it doesn't matter. But now you can easily go back and forth between the master branch and the feature 2.0 branch by clicking the branch again and simply saying master checkout. That's going back to the master branch. You can see that the method is gone. And when you go back again to the feature 2.0 branch, that's the method is right in there again. Okay, cool. So you know how to create a branch. You know how to switch between branches. Now, what happens if, let's say you go back to the master branch and maybe I'll make this bigger again, right? You create a new, let's say you do a bug fix in the master branch. So you create a new method and saying this is a bug fix, like so. Bug fix living on master, right? You commit that. Very important bug fix on production. And now let's have a look at the uh, Git log. And what you can see is rather interesting. So let's make sense of all of this. So here you'll see that's the commit your master branch is on. It's the bug fix. And uh, again, you can open up a change and you'll see, well, that was the bug fix change. And then you'll see there's a different commit. And you see these two commits diverge basically because the level playing field was the last commit they shared. So work on feature 2.0. And if you open it up again, you'll see, well, it's the freakout method. And here you'll see the latest commit, which is on origin master, which means on the remote repository. So you haven't pushed these two yet, or you'd see origin master up here. So you've got your master branch locally, you've got your feature 2.0 branch locally, and you've got the origin branch here. Okay, so far so good. Now go back to the branches window. So it's either in the lower right corner, or you can also open up as a, as a tool window in the center of your window. Go back to your feature branch. And as a rule, it makes sense that your feature branches A get updated regularly with the latest changes from master or whatever. And B that feature branches don't live too long. And that means 
they don't live like half a year and then you have to merge them back to your master branch because that's often a very big mess. So make sure that feature branches are somewhat short-lived. Now you're in your kitten class and you wanna make sure to get the latest changes from master. And for that, again, let me open up the branches window. What you would do is you hit master and then you could do a rebase current onto selected, which I'll show you how to do in the next episode. Or you do a merge into current, which means take all the latest changes from master and merge them into the current branch, i.e. update my branch with the latest changes. So do it. And as you can see, you just got a new method in here. It's the main method. This is a bug fix from master. And also in the version control window, you'll see there's a merge commit, basically uniting our master branch and our feature branch. So you could add some more methods or comments or whatever. So this is a comment. It doesn't really matter. This is your comment, right? And now it's time to commit and push just to see what that looks like. You push all the changes, you open up the branches window, and now you'll see, well, you have the feature branch locally, but the feature branch now also lives on the remote repository because you just pushed it. Cool. So now imagine all your changes are done, and now you wanna make sure that you move all the changes from the feature branch to your master branch again. So you have to go to your master branch, check out, right? And then simply open up the branches window again or select it in the lower right corner, select feature 2.0, and then merge into current, which will make sure to merge all the features from feature 2.0 into the master branch. Let's try that, right? And now you'll see you're in the master branch, there's a new freakout method, and IntelliJ has a nice little pop-up window down here saying, well, I merged the feature 2.0 branch to master, you can actually already delete it because you don't need it anymore. And if you don't delete your feature branches, you'll soon have like 50 or 100 or 200 feature branches in your Git repository. If you miss that tooltip window, you can also, again, uh, who, who would have thought, open up the Git branches window and then do a feature Delete, which will delete it locally, right? So if you check the window out again, you'll see it's not, you don't have it here locally anymore, but it's still on the remote repository. So there you also have to delete it. Delete remote branch, origin feature 2.0. Yes, delete it. Great. And now, as you can see, you've got the master branch, you've got origin master, and that's it. With all the changes, you can make sure to push again to make sure that the merge changes and your freakout methods go to the remote master repository. So you push, you push successfully and everything is there. You can see the log change. You don't have the feature branch anymore, the tag. It's only origin master, but you still have the history that you merged the branch into feature and whatnot. So that's almost everything you need to know when working with Git feature branches and IntelliJ IDEA. Congratulations, you now know the basics of working with Git's feature branches. And in the next episode, you're gonna have a closer look at one more advanced concept that involves feature branches, and that is about rebasing and feature branches. Don't miss it, it's quite a nice and nifty feature, so let's get right after it.